Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny, That Witch Next Door. I'm going to be your host, your guide, mentor, and instructor in all things magic, witchcraft, astrology, and witchy business. And we are back for another Shadow Chats episode. Ashley, yes, Michelle, will you please say hello to everyone? Hello. Did I you guys miss you us? Last month. I know. <laughs> yes. We took a little siesta. We did. We needed it. Mm-hmm. We I enjoyed did. my siesta. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Same. You know, I always forget how busy Gemini season is. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always mm-hmm. forget it. It's, you know, the change of seasons and then we're changing astrological seasons. Mm-hmm. always gets really activated for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We can do, mm-hmm. we can get a lot of shit done right now, but like... I got to rest a lot right now, too, because I'm go, 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 Mm -hmm. going all the time. So, Cancer New Moon. Honestly, I've been kind of referring to, in a very endearing way, the moodiest of new moons. (laughs) I love new moons, and I love Cancer energy. I think that Cancer gets super shit on, quite honestly, especially with the big big crybaby label and everything, like, I don't know. I would have a million percent. Never met a crazy cancer then to call them all crybabies. Right. There's lots of cancers. I'll kick your ass. Um, But Ashley, this is a special new moon for you because you're cancer rising. I'm a cancer rising. How close to your ascendant is this one? That's what I was just looking up, actually. This is on the 28th and it's at 8.52 p.m. my time. So that's going to be 10.52 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, let's see. Um, so my ascendant, and not just my ascendant, but my Jupiter as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. So where is she? Two degrees of Cancer. And my Jupiter is at eight degrees of Cancer. And what's the degree on the new moon? Ooh. It is, sorry, it's loading right now. Yeah, mine was taking a second too. It's the retrograde energy. <laughs> uh, the moon is going to be at seven degrees with the sun. And my, my Chiron is in Cancer too. Forgot about Same-sies. that for a split second. Right, right. Oh, God. Mine's so that, far, that new moon, but still. Mm-hmm. That new moon is like right in the middle of all my juice. Right in the, I love that. Right in the middle of all your juice. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love very first and foremost, Ash, especially to help combat a lot of goofy mainstream astrology. We yeah. give us a little cancer breakdown. What do you yes. like get from cancer vibes? Yes. I'd love to hear this from a cancer rising. Yeah. So like, we're going to get like moody. We're going to get away from Moody, even though there is truth to that. When I think of cancer energy, <laughs> I think of home, mm-hmm. sanctuary, divine feminine, intuition, third eye, the high priestess. I think of this matured mystic. And when I think Ooh. of cancer, because when you think of Pisces, you think of the mystic, but yep. uh, Pisces can be a little under evolved sometimes with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And cancer has this very mature, maternal vibe mm-hmm. to, to, the, to the energy. And when you bring all that together, I think of matured mystic when I think of cancer energy. There is a, a level of comfortability that people feel with cancers. It's almost like you get near somebody with a lot of cancer energy and you feel like you could tell them your whole life story and they mm-hmm. won't tell a soul. There's a mm-hmm. safety with cancer. So that is an important water. word. Uh-huh. That's a very mm-hmm. important word to use. And mm-hmm. you know, what's funny is I did. So it'll come out, I think on Monday for everybody from when this episode's coming out, but I briefly mentioned the cancer new moon in my moon day musings episode. And it's funny that you say that too about moody, because every time I see the word moody get used, it's as an insult. And I, I use that word and see it as, Cancer is comfortable feeling. 
yeah. a the other two water signs are not always comfortable feeling their their emotions. Scorpio mm-hmm. and Pisces have to like learn to accept their emotions and, and showing I think that, their emotions. Yes, too. Mm-hmm. and I think that that safety and security and comfort and cancer that we feel from them. Mm -hmm. is that comfort they have with their own emotional experience. I agree. Because most Mm -hmm. people run from it, quite honestly. They do. That's that's what I love about this new moon is I I want it to be a big giving yourself permission to just feel what you feel. I love that you say that. That, wow, um, that just really hit for me. Giving myself permission to feel what I feel. For the longest time that I could remember, I had always been told that I was too much emotionally, Mm -hmm. too emotional. My emotions are too much, overreacting, feeling too much, too sensitive, all of these words. And then when I started leaning heavily into astrology and really digging into my chart and I discovered my cancer rising, I was like, oh, that's what it is. That's mm-hmm. why people would tell me I was I was so emotional in all of that and dramatic and all mm-hmm. of that. And I had to go almost on this journey of self-love in many different aspects of my life, but specifically with being okay with how I feel and showing my feelings, mm-hmm. showing my emotions and like being okay if, if somebody can sit with that or if they can't, just as long as I'm authentic with myself this is who I am and not feeling like I need to change who I am to make somebody else comfortable. And that was um, a really big lesson that I've learned so far in this incarnation around my feelings. And that's why I have developed this deep love for my cancer rising. It took me a while to get there, you know? Oh, I believe that. I believe that a lot, especially because like I said, even in mainstream cancer gets ragged on so, so Uh much. Um, And honestly, there are volatile and toxic sides to every single sign. Right. And I think that because the water signs operate in our ethereal and emotional realm, that's why they have that hard reputation for that. Yeah. That kind of. I would agree. You know what I mean? Where it's. 100%. I think that those shadows look a little different than Aquarius shadows. That's a good, Uh right? 100%. Very, very different. Very, very, very different. And, you know, I was talking about this the other day on how we are slowly but surely moving out of this um, intense masculine energy that is Mm -hmm. ruled, ruling over the collective right now Mm -hmm. and more into the feminine. And I think that's why, in my opinion, emotions and all of that, it's hard to deal with because we've been conditioned and told that you don't cry or crying is weakness or we don't care about your feelings or buck up, get over it. And like all these things related to emotion and how we should be acting in public Mm -hmm. and all of these things and acting within our relationships, you know? They don't like you because you're too needy. Things like that, which is another word that people use to describe cancer as well, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's interesting because I think now we are really getting to a space where everybody really wants to be in their feelings and we're okay with being in our feelings and we understand the healing that happens when we're in our feelings. Mm -hmm. Heal, another word for cancer. Ooh, absolutely. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's think about where that conditioning comes from, because the truth is, in my opinion, the reason we have suppressed emotions for so long is because we're trying to save other people's feelings. Agreed. When you feel that way, when you talk that way, when you're being this way in, you know, this environment or this environment, you make this person feel this way. And that's yeah. not fair. So you have to write, shut all of that up about yep. you. And the truth is, is, and this is something that I'm going to be honest, I'm going to kind of credit millennials for this. And if you mm-hmm. want to disagree with me, I'd be happy to debate it. But we're starting to really pioneer this path for emotional regulation. And it's not about suppressing and it's not about letting our emotions run our lives either. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Mm -hmm. about actually, and you know what I attribute this to, uh, Pluto and Scorpio, 
quite honestly, that we all share. I really do. Yeah. We're the, we're the first generation in 250 years with Pluto and Scorpio, mm-hmm. just saying. Mm-hmm. And it makes a lot of sense why we're, our generation looks around and goes, why the fuck are we doing things this way? The breakdown, honey. <laughs> Love a good Pluto Hell moment. Yes. Love a good Pluto Hell moment. Yes. Mm-hmm. So now when it does come to some of these shadow sides of cancer, bearing in mind for everybody listening that when we get to new moon time, uh, this is going to bring up shadows, right? We're going to yeah. be in the dark moon phase and you're going to be noticing more of these shadows. For cancer energy, what are some of these shadow traits that might be coming up for people, would you say? what? And these can be things like you have experience yeah, in as well. I was totally. just going to say, I was just going to say, I think I might be having a bit of a shadowy time during this new moon. <laughs> to be quite honest Same with you. Piece. I feel like. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. My 12th right. house oh. is ruled by Cancer. So this <laughs> there you go. Straddling my 11th and 12th. And it'll moon be and Cancer 12. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you have the moon there on pretty much right in the middle of my Chiron, my Ascendant, and yep. my Jupiter. Uh-huh. And then Black All Moon the Lilith has like been hanging said. out. <laughs> All the juice. And Black Moon <laughs> Lilith has been hanging out in Cancer for a while now. And oh, that's takes, right. Good yeah, point. she takes a little bit of time to move. And if I'm not mistaken, she'll still be in cancer around that time. Um, I have to double check that, but I'm almost positive. Last time I checked, she, she will. was in the One earth. degree yeah. away, eight right. degrees, and the moon and sun will be at seven. So she's <laughs> in this game. <laughs> she's in this game. She's coming to play. <laughs> you know, um, I think. I, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the cancer shadows, right? So mm-hmm. the moodiness, the neediness, all mm-hmm. of that, right? Cancers, especially cancer moons, they can be a little moody. And I guess it's all about perception, right? Uh, is moody really a bad thing? Or do we just know when we don't feel like being bothered today? Oh, I love that you said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Because moody has this negative connotation, but like, I That's know what I mean, exactly. Know, right. I just right. feel how I feel. Yeah, I'm moody. I feel how but like, I feel. Yeah. Today is a Netflix and chill day and my phone will be off. And you, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's exactly. what it is. <laughs> you know, I've done enough introspection to know when it might be one uh-huh. of those days uh-huh. and when we might need to unplug a little bit and kind of take extra time for myself. So that heal word is popping into my head, right? Self-care. You know, self-love, working with water, you know, the elements have a natural ability to heal us, whether we're just out taking a walk or we're in like a a spiritual bath or we're working with fire or smoke, Mm -hmm. you know, and maybe that's just the witch in me coming out. But like, I really always tend to feel very healed when I'm working directly with the elements in some way. Hell yes. Mm -hmm. That makes tons of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I think because they're universal. Right. Elements and elemental right. work is beyond our earth, I would even think. I, I you would know what totally I mean? agree. Like, yeah. I would totally agree. There's something super powerful there. And so with that being said, I also want to dig a bit into the neediness. Mm-hmm. How do I want to put this? I've been called needy on more than one occasion. I will tell you, girl, the first half of my life leaning heavy into that cancer rising. Heavy. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I think, in my own opinion, that cancer energy also just knows what it wants. Cancer energy will give you that same affection and attention back. I don't think it's by any accident that I'm marrying a Scorpio because he fulfills that need. You know, he gives me that attention that I want. Mm -hmm. And, And so for that reason, that balance works very well together. You know, I would urge any cancers listening or anybody that's in their feelings about maybe some words that they've been called when it comes to neediness or like finding a partner and all of that. You want what you want and you deserve what you deserve. And I think water signs in general tend to get a bad rap around that, but it is what it is. It's kind of like um, somebody who has a ton of air or fire placements and like can't do like PDA or whatever you want to say. Right. Exactly. It, it is it's what opposite, it is. It's opposite, but the same. Yeah. It, it's opposite, but the same. And I truly feel like we need to get off of labeling people so harshly because we're so much more than even our big three, even. Yes. There's so much more going on than that. And of course, there's a little bit of truth here and a little bit of truth there, but yeah. it's bigger than that. It's bigger than just being a needy bitch. There's... <laughs> 
It's not that simple. Isn't and we right? have to stop categorizing people mm-hmm. based on these super slim boxes that were presented right. for us that we didn't right. even we didn't even get to make up the box. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Most exactly. of us come from generations and this is compounded across cultures, time and space. So this is no any one singular person's fault, I don't think. But children up until recently, like I said, in extremely recent times, were born and you were born and immediately got turned into something that the family needed. Whether yeah. that was like helping hands and like actual work and labor, mm-hmm. or it was the prim and proper, you are here to to be you know, a status symbol, essentially, yeah. right? Like yeah. I'm at this certain place in my life. It's time for for me to have children to you know, for X, Y, and Z, we never have truly lived in a time until now that we're just letting kids be who they are right. for the sake of letting them be who they are and explore that. So it makes mm, a lot God, of sense. It's, it's so true. It's so it makes true. It's so, so true. much sense why we automatically reject these boxes that were mm-hmm. created. And we, mm-hmm. we wake up one day and we're like, I don't want to do any of those things. And that's really... Right. What I hear and what you're saying, especially when you compare the elements like that, you're valid if your desire is to want that love and compassion and connection with a partner. Exactly. And if you if that's not your bag. Right. If you're like puke, no, thank you. I do not want any of that. Cool. That's why are we still forcing people down one fucking path, down Mm -hmm. one road Mm -hmm. and then insulting them and calling them needy, moody, too much dramatic, right? For barely veering off of this narrow, Mm -hmm. narrow path. Right. Now I want to ask you, cause I have this a little bit in my chart and I know a lot of people similar as you and me, where you have this major cancer placement, especially Mm -hmm. you with your rising. But then you have these other very, very extroverted, (laughs) fiery placements. How do you find balance, Ash? How do you find balance between that? Did you have to learn that kind of the hard way, like putting yourself out there too much or also times of too much maybe hermit or isolation? Oh, God, that is a great question. Um, I think I'm still finding balance, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So um, to anybody who's like new to the podcast, so I have a Cancer Rising, I'm a Sagittarius Sun and an Aquarius Moon. So Danny's right. <laughs> You're right. <I'm> saying <laughs> that, like I've got this super like sensitive and like really intuitive rising sign. And then like these like firecracker ass, like moon, a moon and sun. And I noticed that there are times when I might lean more into one than the other. And I've spoken to this before. As a child, my cancer rising was super high. I was super sensitive, super shy. Go figure, right? People are always surprised when I say that. I was the shyest of kids. Me it too. was really cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super shy. And then as I got older, high school, 20s, and now my 30s, my Sag came out. And now as I'm hanging out in my 30s, I have found this beautiful balance where my cancer, I feel like, is a lot more activated in the work that I do. Um, Just being a channel, right? And working with my intuition and leaning on my intuition super heavy, not just with my clients, but for my life, right? My everyday decisions, just Mm -hmm. really kind of listening to source that I feel like that's very, very, very cancerian. And then when it comes time to like, pull the trigger on really big decisions or do something crazy, the stash comes out to play. And I think, I think we can all kind of take a moment to reflect on who we are and how we show up in our day to day and where we might lean into other aspects of our chart more or less. Right. I feel like I lean into my Capricorn stellium every time I do a money date with myself and my business Mm -hmm. and get really intimate with my numbers. Sagittarius doesn't want to do that. I can't stand it, actually. (laughs) I hate doing my money dates weekly. I Uh want to do every other thing, but I know I need to do that to understand my numbers for my business. So that's when I'm like, okay, Capricorn Stellium, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the beauty of astrology, though, where we can kind of dig into bits and pieces of ourselves when we need to. And even when we don't think we need to, sometimes I need that cancer rising to come in because the Sagittarius energy and the Aquarius can be really tactless and direct mm, okay. and abrupt and yeah. abrasive. 
right? So, and I can be all of those. All of that totally. <laughs> I can be abrasive as fuck. <laughs> you know, so finding that like gentle touch and that nurturing energy mm-hmm. with the people in my life that I love, with my private clients, everybody in between, cancer really, really helps me to do that, to really just kind of sit with my divine feminine. Because, you know, Sagittarius and Aquarius, they're both masculine signs. Mm-hmm. So that that feminine energy is kind of holding down the fort mm-hmm. when I need her to, mm-hmm. you know? I love that. And, you know, cancer brings this soft and receptive energy. Yeah, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. And we're cardinal here. Yeah. We need to remember, and this is what I mean by, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever fucked with a cancer, but I yeah. got cancer. <laughs> like, I dated a couple male cancers. Like, yeah. can be very, very, very intense energy, too. We it have can. to also remember that when cancer, this being the original home of our emotions. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. looking at the zodiac wheel, mm-hmm. we start Aries, Taurus, Gemini, it Cancer is the first time we get empathy. Right. We actually take other people into consideration. And I think this is where you kind of find their fiery cardinal energy is you Mm -hmm. don't fuck with the people that cancer loves. No, no, you don't. Um, My partner's also a cancer rising. So I didn't know that. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So we're both cancer risings. And then he's got that Scorpio energy with the Gemini Mm -hmm. moon. So the whole thing is really fascinating. That's really (laughs) He's a very, very cool. intense person. He's <laughs> very, very, very cool. Gemini very moon intense. on top of all of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I gave birth to a Gemini moon. I know a couple <laughs> other Gemini moons, so I get it. And Goodness. that's so interesting, too, because, again, we this is the cool part about astrology is your moon, right, might not be at home in Cancer. The ruler right. and and kind of navigator of your emotional realm might be in a totally different sign Mm -hmm. but you'll find these moon like lunarly themes wherever Mm -hmm. cancer is in your chart though Mm -hmm. and I think that's really that's when I really started um so this ruling my 12th house for example like I would lean into this uh, and my chirons there so this added to that but I would get a little bit afraid of that area of my yeah. life, my unconscious, yeah. my subconscious. I was afraid. Mm-hmm. And when cancer's afraid, the shell goes up right? and it is impenetrable force. Right. When cancer shuts down, right. get the fuck out. You're not getting Seriously. that shell. Like, I love that you brought that through. up because that is very <laughs> much how I am. Like, once I'm all set, I'm all set. Like, I'm yeah. not mad at you. I just don't care about you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, Once I'm the done. shell goes up, the I'm shell done. goes up. I'm and done. I had to start seeing yeah. my 12th house and my subconscious as, oh, this is a homey p- place for me. Mm-hmm. I need to, re- and you know, it's funny yeah. when I do astral work and when I have to like travel through my subconscious first, mm-hmm. it's always like a house. It's always homely in some way. It's always, I have to like, sort through like a really messy room in order to get yeah. to a tidy room it's so funny and it's, yeah. it's i think it's because cancer's cancer home. <laughs> yes it is it's, cancer's uh-huh. home yeah so and that's i love that you you brought that up because the simplest things that we can do to honor this new moon is to clean our home you know yes. to create like space and sanctuary in our home and tidy up what we need cancer loves home and yes. it's a creature of comfort are your favorite mm-hmm. bed sheets on your bed, you know, do you, do you light a nice candle, set mm-hmm. the mood, something super easy that we can all do. And it doesn't require anything extra, but yeah. just to show our home some love and attention on this new mood. Yeah. You Nurturing know? yourself, being your yeah. own caregiver. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that maternal side of cancer to me Very is regardless so. of your relationship to mother. How can you mother yourself right? Yeah, we didn't even really, really get into that. Really care give for yourself mm-hmm. right now, you mm-hmm. know, because I think about you having cancer ruling your first house. Mm-hmm. And like when we did your reading, like I think mm-hmm. of this is caring for oneself. Like you yeah. you have to make your body your home. That's how much mm-hmm. you have to nurture it and love it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Totally and agree with that. You totally had a whole journey with that. You've, I you should, exactly <laughs> like that's that's exactly it. And um, you know, I saw 
the journey with my body and my weight loss, I'm down like almost a hundred pounds. Congratulations. It's crazy, right? That's Thank amazing. you. Yeah. And I, I remember like looking at my birth chart and seeing all that shit up there in cancer. And I'm like, whoa, like this incarnation, I was supposed to work on body. Like this was one of the things that I was supposed to work on as a soul mission, right? Because mm-hmm. I believe, you know, we've got personal soul missions and collective soul missions. Absolutely. And, you know, and one of my collective soul missions is doing this sort of soul work that that we both do, right? Mm-hmm. In this space. And then my personal soul mission was 100% around making my body home and feeling comfortable in my body and with my body and what that might feel like and making my body feel healthy and strong and amazing. And, um, oh my God, now I'm, I'm going deeper into my chart. I'm thinking of my son in six because my son is in six. How sick. Oh yeah. And then six house self-service. Exactly. And then health yes. and body and all of exactly. that. Exactly. You can see so much in your natal chart with, you know, what to look for. It, it's still, no matter how long I've been practicing astrology, it still mind boggles me how much is in there. I know. It's, it's crazy. It's honestly a little, yeah. Sometimes you're like, I feel like it's we were crazy. given too many cheat codes. There can't <laughs> possibly be this many cheat codes. And there are. There are. There, there are. There really Bro, are. If you pay when attention. I saw, when I saw that, that was when I really was like, okay, we're going to take my health more seriously. Only when I saw that cheat code inside of my chart Mm -hmm. and I, all of a sudden everything kind of fit. Yep. That's why this, I'm so glad we're talking about this. This is why astrology is quote unquote real. I hate even that that's a question. That's why I don't like saying it's quote unquote real. Cause I'm like, uh, but because it's not about the planets make me do this. Yeah. That's not it. It's about when I see confirmation like that in my chart, right. I don't feel fucking crazy anymore. Exactly. You can't gaslight me anymore. You can't gaslight me anymore. I know 100%. this is part of my mission. I know 100%. this is part of my purpose, right? Mm-hmm. I can trust. I can surrender. I can accept mm-hmm. with that mm-hmm. really powerful validation. That's exactly. what, when I think of your, that huge connection you made when you your first house and your sixth house like that it's not right you can look at that and go oh see i was supposed to be fucked i was supposed to be right (laughs) or you can look at that and fucking do something about it yeah like you know literally going back to my weight loss as an example i years i'm 32 years old i've been a spin instructor on and off i've been vegan gluten-free i've lost weight i've gained weight i've done all of this in my life i was always the plus size girl that could go out and hike a mountain Always. There was never any problem with me being active. I was never somebody that ate like three double cheeseburgers at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I was just always heavier set. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I was like, this is one of my personal soul missions to work with and through my body. Like this is, this is the fucking assignment. This is one of the major assignments of my soul. This is why it has been such a thing in my life. Exactly. Crazy. Making that connection between one and six and making that connection with Chiron and Cancer and Cancer 1, too, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to remember, you know, for those of you guys that are listening, one is how we show up in the world. So, you know, Chiron being in one like that in Cancer, this is all about, do I love myself, my Mm -hmm. physical Mm -hmm. self, Mm -hmm. you know? And six is the same thing. Sun and six just re-highlights that again. Am I taking care of my physical body? Yep. Fucking gnarly. These placements, I always look at them as you and your higher self sat down and chose these so that you yeah. can bypass those lessons in this life. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree. 100% your empty agree. houses, I'll be honest, you can inadvertently bypass those areas. I yeah. think the point of astrology is to try and balance everything and try mm-hmm. and activate each of those areas mm-hmm. throughout your life. Because again, like I've told you guys on the show, you are that chart. Right. So when you tell me I don't have Gemini, yeah, you do. It's yeah, on that do. chart. It's on that chart. Yes, you do. And that's Gotta okay. But them. you need to yeah. see your whole self when you're on that chart and realize mm-hmm. these empty places aren't of major concern or focus mm-hmm. from a natal standpoint, right? Because all year, those house, empty houses get activated by different they transiting do. plans, planets. And yeah, trust they me, do. your empty houses get filled at one point or another. 
But right. those main stacked areas, like mm-hmm. Ashley with her juice, all the stallion Ugh. like that. Oh, my God. That's when your higher self's like, uh-uh, we're not skipping this this time. That's crazy. There we're is- not skipping this this time. Yeah, I love that. One of my old astrology mentors explained empty houses to me uh, this way, which I really loved. She said that your soul just chose not to focus on those areas mm-hmm. for this incarnation. So. Yep. You know, like you said, you can bypass them. And of course they get activated. Like yeah. if you're trying to figure out how to lead or work with community and your house 11 is empty, mm-hmm. look to the sign, you know, we, right. we can do it. Mm-hmm. But when we have lots of stuff happening in certain houses or under certain signs, we really want to pay close attention to that because those are our cheat codes. Exactly. You know, they exactly. are, there's some juice there. And this, honestly, God, so much of this goes with cancer energy just because Mm -hmm. this is tapping into our intuitive and spiritual energy. Yeah. Giving our space and the validation to feel what we feel in this exploration, right? right? It's not about minimizing the experience. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to do is don't Mm -hmm. minimize your experience this new moon. Just what is it? Be big, be loud, be expansive. We, We deserve that. We have every right to be just as expansive as anybody else, especially when we sit in cancer in our divine feminine. And that's really all about like, People are afraid of the divine feminine. They don't want to touch it. They don't know about it. They're unsure about it. And we're seeing more and more and more spiritual workers working in the divine feminine, Mm -hmm. working with yoni energy, working Mm -hmm. with dance and music and feelings. But just three years ago, even, this sort of work wasn't even a thing. And, you know, I think the more of us that acknowledge our divine feminine parts of ourselves will help others, give others permission to do so, a.k.a. the fucking patriarchy. This is how we merge. This Thank to you. me yes. is how we heal the toxic sides of masculinity and the toxic sides of femininity that we've Agreed. been supposed to be experiencing and Agreed. going through. We're supposed to be fed up with shit. Mm-hmm, 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 that mm-hmm. otherwise there Pluto is no growth. Thank you. There is no growth without with shit, that. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. you have to get so fed up that you do something about it. Mm-hmm. This for me again, twelfth house. Like I'm gonna do a lot of. I've been really called to astral realm anyway, so I'm gonna be doing yeah. a lot, a lot of astral work. But Ashley, I'd love for you to tell everybody what advice do you have for this new moon? Especially if it's just anything that kind of naturally comes through right now. Yeah. I feel anybody needs to hear for this new moon. Pay attention to your dreams. Dreams tend to get really heavy when we're working in cancer in general. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if anybody out there is looking for confirmation or a message of some sort, ask your guides to give it to you in the dream world. Yes. So the one thing I love to tell people is when you're looking to connect with your guides, your higher self, whatever we want to call it, them, they, whatever, mm-hmm. ask, ask. Our guides are always with us and they're always willing to help. But I think so many of us have this block on divine feminine in asking because we have been programmed. What the fuck are you talking about, Willis? Ask yeah, who, you're what, crazy when, where, if why. you do right. that. Exactly. You ask those motherfuckers, they will show up for you. We both have transformed our lives in in simple in a simple ask. And asking to be held, asking to be seen, asking for 100%. all of that, asking for guidance uh-huh. when it comes to our higher selves, to our guides. So right around this new moon, before you go to bed, simply just visualize on what it is you're looking to know or where it is you're looking to go or whatever the goal is, whatever you have on your mind. And let the answers come to you quite intuitively and organically. That's another thing too. Cancer energy is all about intuition. The high priestess, oftentimes when we are looking for messages, whatever is immediately coming up is what you need. Don't damn that shit as if it's nothing, as if you're making it up. Lean into your intuition. It's going to yes. be so strong. Yes. Yes. This is when we're talking about cancer being rooted in home and nurturing Mm -hmm. like this like as soon as you were saying that it reminded me like if it's comfort and reassurance that you need ask for that right you I think that's one thing that Ashley and I 
at our, I guess if you call it experience level, I hate saying it that way, mm-hmm. but it is. Mm-hmm. It's really just practice, by the way. It's it's That's no it. better skill set of any kind. It's just practice and we've done it for a long time. Yes. But mm-hmm. you realize I almost had an awakening within my spiritual awakening of like, I just have to ask. Okay. That's it. You, it could be That's anything, it. and I just have to That's ask it. for it. That's it. It's you, fucking anything. Yes. It's absolutely insane how one can really change their lives with just really leaning into the experience of life and asking for what it is you deserve. And not for nothing, but I think a lot of those blocks is people, you know, some of you might feel seen right now, feeling like you don't deserve the thing. Yes. Thank you. You know, that's we, why we you don't, like don't ask. That. Right. Whether it's subconscious or conscious, yep. cancer, subconscious on the mm-hmm. new moon. Let's try to pull up some of these subconscious shadows yes. around what you feel like you deserve. Because we truly do create our own reality, no matter yeah. how cliche it is. It's the fucking truth. Yeah. Everything that we're sitting in, we have created it. So are we happy with this creation or are we not? And if we're not happy this, with this creation, what can we do to change it? Yes. And honestly, if you feel selfish, undeserving of mm-hmm. these comforts that you seek, mm-hmm. I honestly want you to list them out because you'd be shocked. Yeah. So many people think that they're so selfish and they tell me the things they're seeking. And I'm like, these are basic human comforts. You basic. absolutely deserve this. Mm-hmm. Ask for it. Because mm-hmm. when you ask for it, you're telling yourself and your guides that you know you deserve it. You're advocating for right. yourself. Not only that, it's confidence codes. I was just having this conversation yes. in um my my with my private clients about that. Like, toot your own horn. I am just a firm believer in just showing up for myself. I am that bitch. I deserve everything. I like I deserve whatever the fuck I want. I want a luxe lifestyle. I deserve it. I want my nails done every week. Fine. Like, whatever it is, we have been very much conditioned to always be in this mode of giving that we're all so fucking uncomfortable with receiving. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we have to change that narrative. That's a cancer shadow, too, by the way. Self over self sacrificing like that. Fuck yeah, that's a good lesson. Very much so. That's where your Sag and your Aquarius (laughs) came through and helped build up that cancer. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Cancer is definitely um, known as like the martyr and just whatever. I don't know. I'll give and give and give. I'll give and give and give, even though I'm uncomfortable and I'm not okay. It's a Mm -hmm. huge cancer shadow. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time, you know. I find that fascinating to the parallels because, you know, cancer is known as the divine feminine and feminine energy is often equated to giving. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting mm-hmm. that we're seeing that. I'm, I'm thinking all hard. My query is coming it. out um, <laughs> because, you sure. know, because the masculine mm-hmm. is masculine is taking right. Always taking and the feminine is always giving. So it's almost kind of like, what if we just did one of a, a switcheroo? Mm-hmm. What sort of world would we be creating right. if we took from our divine feminine and gave from our divine masculine? Right. Fuck. There's that merging. There's right. that new paradigm, right? right. There's that right. new, that up level, that collective right. up level. And right. it ain't happening while we keep doing what we've been doing. No. Obviously. That's just going to keep us where we are. So... I I really think that tap into your cancer vibes to give, but right to yourself. Exactly. That's exactly. what I would do. Very much so. I totally I agree. agree. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Did you guys miss us? Our shadow cats <laughs> always go by so fast. So good. I know. Oh, I love it so, so I much. Do. This was an awesome, awesome one. Ash, before we go, please let everybody know where we can find you and follow you and support you. Yes, yes. Starseed shadows everywhere. And at the time that you all are listening to this, the Lightworkers Academy is open. My witchy school for witchy folks, for lightworkers, starseeds, the whole shebang. I will give Danny a link if you're interested in joining us over there. But it is the place to gain access to me. So Hell check yes. it out. Hell and the yes. Goddess Complex podcast. Always. Too. Mm-hmm. All of Ashley's links are in the show notes below. You know where to find us. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Stay magical out there. Hey, magical. 
magical human, thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Witch Podcast. If you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to share with a friend or give a shout out on your social media. You can also leave a five-star rating and review on both Apple and Spotify. And if you can't get enough of all of our witchy, magical content here in the neighborhood, you definitely want to make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter, That Witch Gazette. It's a really fun, really convenient, one-stop shop to stay up to date on all of the news and happenings here in our neighborhood. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas for the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, you can send me a message at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjurethatwitch. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.